Here's, 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 another, here's another rule of, of, again, simple anatomy that goes here. This is the profile of an arm. You have your bowling ball shoulder, right? It's a big teardrop, basically. On one side, and, and this, would be the, this is pointing forward. On one side is the bicep, and on the other side is the tricep. And again, the bump of, the, of your bicep is here, the bump of your tricep is here, just flex, it's here. Here's that bump here, and here's the bump right here. There, there's, there's, a, there's an angle, natural angle that Greg was saying. But then this line that was dividing the two, it goes down in here, and it goes into that muscle that's in your forearm. If you grip your arm, grip your arm, you know that bump you get right here, right? That, that line goes, I don't know if you guys can see this here. That bump that you get right here is the line that goes here, and it comes up in here, and then it, and Greg, you show, you got better. <laughs> it goes up in here, and then it splits up in here, and it's a continuation of this teardrop separating the front and the back, comes up in here, and then goes around up in here, and then it comes back up in here, and then it goes all the way down into your finger. So there's, there are long lines in the bodies that start, you can start them up in here and meander them all the way through the body. And the next thing you know, this is how I used to draw it when I'm drawn, which is a little bit like, like Greg saying, is that, is that I, I do a lot of drawing like this where I actually keep it all connected. And then I, you know, I'll, I'll pick it up the odd time and go, here's the hand, here's the body. I come up in here and I keep a lot of the lines and I rarely take the pen on, and I get my construction very quickly doing that because, because now, as you can see, here's my chest, Here's my line here, here's my bicep here, here's my shoulder here. I tighten it up afterward, but if I just do it super quick like Greg was saying, then I can get, I can get to those shapes very quickly. So again, you just have to figure out, you have to figure out how it is that you're gonna, you're gonna get to any of those shapes. So, you wanna go and walk into uh, the, the head now a little bit? Okay. Um. <clears throat> You've got to have a head in all these bodies. Right. Again, my approach is a, a little different. I usually start, you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come in like this, and I, I, and this is going to start to be the neck here because I like big fat necks with high traps, and so I, I this is how I construct very quickly a head. I, I like fat necks. See, and, uh, and, and in keeping with what I was mentioning before, you know, I, I like the high trap because it adds to that sag that I was telling you about. It gives a more natural look than a lot of the guys who come straight across and, and do that deal. But anyway, uh, I, I follow the same thing where I'm thinking about planes. And because uh, a head essentially is like a circle and a box combined sort of. So go, here's, here's a head. So when I do a head like this, you know, I, and it starts just looking like a lump of nothing, all right? I can turn this head now in, in many different directions. If I put a line here, it's similar to this. I could just come here with the jaw, and it'd be, you know, straight down. But I can also change it, and, and he's, he's, he's looking up, and now this whole section becomes the neck, which is why I typically start with my neckline, and then I would divide that thing and divide the head this way, and his nose would be up there, and his mouth would be up here, following the perspective. Right, because the head's now tilting back like a cylinder, so we wrap everything around there. So, excuse me, can you turn that off? Just kidding. <laughs> it was like, oh no. Um, so my way of doing it is, is is to start with the neckline, and and I build from there. But the head is essentially a giant circle in a box, and I take it for granted that most people know this. And then you would divide this circle in in, in perfect half, and this would be your where your eyes would be planted, and then slightly about midway to there, and then the jaw would come down like this, so your nose would be about here. And then a third of the distance between the nose and the chin would be your mouth line. And so this is your basic quick construction, you know, of a, of a head. Did I? Yeah. My two, two? No, 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 because, because when, when, and the reason he saw the two pieces, the round, is that basically what he's giving you is, let me go blank here, is he's giving you the skull, right? Just so, you, just so everybody knows, when you're watching somebody, let's go. I'm gonna go on the profile here. When, when, when we're drawn, there's, there's only two pieces to the head. There's here's your eye, here's your nose, here's your skull teeth, right? And then you got your jaw, right? The thing that actually makes us talk, the thing that I, if you, this doesn't ever move. It can't because it's a bone. It doesn't move. 
everything that we do when we talk is the bottom bone. It's the only, this one doesn't move up here. It's like the hinges down here. So what Greg's saying is that he's giving you this circle here, and then he's sort of giving you the jaw that goes back down up in here, because essentially it's just a skull. We've seen what the construct of a, of a skull looks like. If we go, again, go over some easy rules of the head, we'll go now to the head drawing 101, that once you've got both those pieces, think of it as an egg. And the reason it's an egg, because an egg, as you guys know, is a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom. If you look at most people's faces, um, you know, that, that is supposed to be sort of the super heroic classic look. They've got the, the top of their head's a little bit wider. Greg's saying, which is correct, halfway through, and it may seem like an odd rule, ladies and gentlemen, that the eyes are halfway through. The reason we don't believe that is because most of us have hair. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to go there. Right, and and, and the, the, the hair changes the illusion of what's there. Once you put hair here, people think the eyes are higher. It's just not true. So if you actually look at some, a baby and or uh, somebody who doesn't have a lot of hair, you're going to see that it's about center. And then what it does is once it gives you center, then you have to put the eyes. And the rule is the eyes are at the halfway mark, and then the eyes are equally spaced, are equally spaced which basically means, and again, don't take our word for it, go look in the mirror, that the width of each eye, let's go right here, the width of each eye, the space between it is an eye. So here's an eye, a space of an eye, and an eye. Don't take my word for it, look at your neighbor. So, so you get it, because what you, too many people do, Greg and I have seen it, you do these Charlie Brown drawings and you get this. <laughs> right? Or you, get, or you get them up in here. You can't do it. And then once you, once, you, once you get to this point, then again, the halfway point down here is the nose, but really it's a triangle. It's a triangle. And there's where your nose is about halfway. Here's this, and now you go another halfway, and you, go, you got your nose. And then the reason the triangle is important, because if you continue the triangle, that's the edge of your mouth. Again, lots of guys like to give mouths like that. <laughs> it's kind of cool comic book. Right. But we know that to be true, because I've told people before, is that all you have to do is look at some of us that are getting a little bit older, and we get this age line here. And it's, it goes from the nose, and it goes in a triangle on the outside of our mouth. It's there. Sadly, we're all going to get it. But so look at the young, young kids. Person, and you don't have a mirror. Yeah. Uh, that reflects this image, uh, you can, you can, uh, which would be terrible. To do. Uh, is is the center of the eye? If you just take a line and go straight down, that will show you where the corners of the mouth lie. You know, those yeah. are lines. So a young person wouldn't have these. So if you're drawn, you know, young buff superhero type or whatever. Um, yeah, so once you erase that, then you know that you've got a decent-sized mouth. I mean, you can use those as guidelines and then get them out of there. Become, they become eight. Here's another trick, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this. The easiest way to give youth or add age isn't necessarily wrinkles. It's the neck, right? So watch this. Here's, here's our guy. He's got his ears. And remember, the ears come about the same line as the eyes here. We've got the ear. Hey, wait a minute. Can I see this for a second? <laughs> and this one here is for my wife who lost my favorite hat before I came out to the show. All right, now. Okay. So, so, okay, so here's our guy here. He got he's got that he's got the, the capullo, he's got the capullo neck, and he's got the big he's got the big shoulder, he's doing he's looking good, right? So so again, let me see who's who do I have here? Let me, let me ask you, how, how old is that guy? Answer carefully. <laughs> 35. It's a pretty good guess. It's good a pretty answer. solid guess. Okay. Now, good it's a good answer. Now, now watch this. With, with, but a slight of a hand, mm, we we'll take the same guy. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now, now, how old that guy look? Very old twelve. Yeah. Very old twelve. Right.